Namaskar, dear devotees and friends. Today, the Wednesday evening, and we are supposed to read and discuss the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, which I prefer to say the Panchama Veda. But instead, today we will be discussing about Sri Hanumana, the personification of four yogas. So, it is because yesterday was Hanuman Jayanti. So, I thought that you people will like it uh, to discuss about the Hanumana. Swami Vivekananda liked Sri Hanumana and he asked his disciples, be like Hanumana, the great personality. Millions of people, the Hindus, they worship the Hanumana. So who is this Hanumana? So let us discuss about that. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna himself, he also practiced as Sri Hanumana to see how to realize God like Hanumana. So the, most of you know, those who have read the biography of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. So let us start. As because we are going to listen to the great discussion, so the same sloka we will chant. Tabu katham ritam tapta jeevanam kavi bhiriritam kalma shapaham srabana mangalam sri madatatam bhubi grinanti e bhurita janaha. It's a very famous character, Hanuman. The name Hanumana uh, can be uh, defined in this way, Hanu plus Manta. Some people they say is a Hanu plus Manta. So Hanumanta, Hanumana. That means one with prominent jaw. One with prominent jaw is a Hanuman. Hanuman is the face we see very prominent, very proud about his this very prominent jaw. The one with prominent jaw, the Hanu Manta Hanuman. Another the the way we can say Han plus Mana. Han means destruction. Hanta the Han plus man, the one who destroy the man or ego. Mana means ego. The Han plus man, the one who destroy the ego, Hanuman was not having any ego at all. So that is the speciality of Hanuman. So this is, he is also known as the Pavana Putra, the son of Pavana, the god, the wind god. And he is in reality, his father was Keshari Nandana. He is also known as Keshari Nandana, the son of the king Keshari. He was the ruler of the Sumeru hill. Keshari's father was the famous Brihaspati, the teacher of the gods. The, if we see this, the family, then we can understand as we think that they were monkeys, the most of the time Hanumana they will translate as a monkey and the moment we say about the monkey immediately, the picture of the animals, it comes. Is it? No, we don't think so. The, it cannot be. He was known also as Anjaniya because of the mother Anjana the son of the mother Anjana, Anjaniya. In those days, in India, the Hindus, they from their mother name also. Then the Kunti's son, Kauntiya. So like that, always it was there. The mothers were highly respected. He is also known as the Mahavira. Mahavira, the great hero. Sometimes, there's a confusion that some people they make. 
because the Jain tradition, they have the Mahavira. The Mahavira, the Jain, his name was also Mahavir, but this Mahavira is a great hero. And Bajrang Boli, one who is powerful like the thunder, Bajra, Bajrang Boli. So there are many stories that the Indra threw the, uh, the thunder to him and he broke the jaw like that, like that. So he is a powerful uh, like the thunder, so Bajrang Boli. So Hanuman, Bhavanaputra, Keshari Nandana, Anjaniya, Mahavira, and Bajrang Boli, these are the very famous names we find about Hanuman. Now friends, a little discussion about the, this race, Hanuman race, and we can say monkey civilization, if we translate the word, the I prefer to say Banara Sabhyata. Banara, they were a race. There are people, so they used to t take the form of the Hanuman. So that, we cannot say that they were the monkeys. They were the Banaras, like the, the Naga. They were not, the Naga means snake, but they were not really snake. So as because it's a very far, and the problem is, the Indian people, they never describe this properly. So that way, as the European historians, they always describe, it was not like that. They used to give always the preference on the characters, the special of the characters. Now, this Banara Sabhyata, Hanumana's father, Keshari was the king of the Sumeru. And Banara race ruled in the regions of Himalaya, Mahendra Hill, Bindha, Kailasha, Mandara, and also many other places. Now mostly we find they used to live in the hills and in the forest, and they mainly they used to think that their symbol is Hanumana. And the Hanumana, they used to have that type of dresses also. In the Ramayana, it is mentioned that the Hanumana, before going to Sri Lanka, tucked his tail. So why he will tuck the tail? The tail, if it is, because the monkeys are having their tails, natural trails. Why he tucked the tail? What does it mean? It seems they used to dress like that. Maybe the Banaras in the social status, little lower. We find that when the Lakshmana is going to that kingdom, Queen Tara, Lakshmana was very angry because the Sugriva gave the word that he will help Sri Ramachandra after the rainy season. Rainy season was over. They are supposed to go and find out the Ma Sita, that she was abducted by someone. They never knew who. So that Rama was very much worried. Now he forgot and he was enjoying. that This is the Ramayana story, almost all of you know. And the Lakshmana and Rama, they were waiting, waiting, waiting the long, the rainy season was over. Even then, no one was coming. So the Lakshmana, Rama said, go and remind the king that he is supposed to help me. I have helped him fighting with his elder brother. So that was, so the Lakshmana went and Lakshmana was angry, the very intelligent queen, that is Tara. She came to pacify Lakshmana. And when she was telling, please don't be angry with uh, this Sugriva, we are like that. We are not like you people. So she used Prithagajana, this word she used. We are different than you, Prithagajana. We are not Aryans. We are not civilized as you people are. So please don't misunderstand us. We will, of course, keep our promises. 
but we love fun and this type of life. So, Prithagajana, the different in culture. Now, if they are the monkeys of the, in the jungle, or the animals, now how come the Sushena, and Sushena was the father of the Queen Tara, and he was a very famous physician in those days. He was the king's physician, Rajabhidya. How he could be like that? Can an animal be like that? Secondly, he's, he used to be accepted in the whole Ramayana, it has been said, Mahapragya. Mahapragya, Pragya means a very knowledgeable person, highly educated person, Mahapragya. So he was. Then another person we come to know when they were planning to go to Sri Lanka, when Sri Hanumana went to Sri Lanka, an island, so where he found Sita abducted by the, the king of that island, Ravana. He came back, reported to Sri Rama. Then they were planning to go over there. How it is possible? So we have to make a bridge. Nowadays a lot of people are discussing and sometimes we find that the satellite pictures really there is a as if a stone made bridge is there under the water connecting the Indian that part and to the southern part of India connecting with the Sri Lanka. The, the debates are there, people have different opinion. But the story goes over here and says, we have to make that a bridge. And how? He actually developed, he discovered the stone carting machine. Why I am telling this? Because we like to think that Hanumana is a monkey, there's the animal. And whenever we see the monkeys, we think they are actually from the Hanumana. Nothing wrong if you are expecting that. We should love the monkeys, we should protect the monkeys. That is okay. But considering the, the great, the Hanumana as the monkey is very sad, I think. Swami Vivekananda said, it is not possible for anyone except the human being to control the mind. So it is the only the human being can control the mind and we will come to that Hanumana was a great yogi. The Nala discovered that. Now after saying this I will go to another discussion. Rama was very much impressed with the Hanumana when they, he met him first time. The Hanumana came in the disguise of a Brahmin and talked to Rama and the language was flawless. Friends, we have to remember Tara is telling the Lakshmana, we are Prithagajana, we are different from you, we are not that way cultured as you people are. But even then, when the Hanumana first time coming, in the disguise of a Brahmin and talking with Sri Ramachandra, who was a highly educated person because he was educated under the guidance of the great Rishis. And he talked in, in that such a way, the Rama was impressed. Each and every word the Hanumana used is the perfect, the, uh, the words that when we are going and talking with the cultured people, you know, the same language, but the words you are choosing, that is very, very important. In the English people also speaking the English, but you can understand they are not cultured people. Sometimes some people, most of them, they use as the slangs to express their mind. But a cultured man will never do that. So Hanumana came and he talked with Rama. Rama was so much impressed when the Lakshmana was doubtful about this man, where from he came in this jungle. 
But the Rama told, have you noticed him? He's so courteous, so gentle. Words, languages, and without any mistake in grammar. That means Onumana was speaking in Sanskrit, it seems. And he knew it. But these, we can say in brief, that it is not a the monkey that we think of the animals of the jungle, but they were a great race, very advanced race, and they were having the kingdom all over. And why I am telling kingdom? Because when the Lakshmana went to meet the Sugriv, he had to pass through the big, big gates and decorate it with gold and other the jewelries the beautiful gates. The, if they were uncultured monkeys, as we always think, why it was there? So this is the description in the Ramayana. And to introduce Hanuman, Balmiki, the great, introducing Hanuman, the main, we can say that one of the very, very famous character after Rama, the very famous character of the Ramayana is Hanumana. And to introduce him, he is telling, Atalita Baladhamam, Swarna Sailava Deham, Danuja Bana Krishanum, Gyani Nam Agraganyam, Sakalaguna Nidhanam, Banara Nam Adisham, Raghupati Baradutam, Bhat jatam namami. Namami, I salute. I salute to whom? Bhat jatam. Bhat means bayu, the wind. So I salute the son of the wind god, Bhat jatam, whose power is unparalleled. Atulita, tulana, tulana means comparing, unparalleled. You cannot compare. Atulita Baladhamam. Bala means the power. Then how he looked, his whole body was just like a the golden color. He was not the, you know, the other complexion is golden complexion. Sarna Shailava Deham and a huge body. Sarna Shaila. Shaila means the hill. The, as if the golden mountain, Sharna Shailava Deham, Dunujabana Krishanum, and he was like a raising fire over the forest of the demons. So we know that he burned the most part of Sri Lanka, like that, like that. So he was a very, very powerful. So like that, Dunujabana Krishanum. At the same time, Jnani Nam Agraganyam. The friends, when the Balmiki is introducing, he is introducing in this way that he is very physically powerful, intellectual. And though he was having a very powerful, beautiful body, and he could smash the enemies, but he was very intelligent and not only intelligent, he was the foremost among the, among the wise people. Jnani Nam Akraganyam. Now, who is a Jnani? We go back to Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. One who know about the Brahman, he is a Jnani. There is knowledge of the one is a jnani. The Agraganyam, he was the foremost. That means he also knew the Brahman, the so Brahma jnani. Sakalaguna Nidhanam, unless and until you be, are having all those qualities, the great qualities, you cannot realize Brahman. So the Balmiki. First he is telling Jnani Nam Agraganyam. Then next line he is telling Shakala Guna Nidhanam. 
he was the possessor of all good qualities banuranam adisham and he was the leader of the banara finally he is telling the balmiki is telling raghupati baradutam he was the trusted messenger of sri lord rama raghupati raghupati we know ramachandra the rama's clan was known as the raghu's clan the pati he was the master so raghupati the that means the ramachandra he was the baradutam dutam means the messenger Usually, the, those are the messengers. They become very, very devoted. They will never change the world. Whatever the master has said, they will exactly utter those. That means they are intelligent. They can remember those messages or the orders of the masters, and they know how to put it before the the other king. Message was given. So Raghupati. when the rama's messenger means whom the rama trusted and we know when the hanumana was going to search rama gave there were thousands of hanumanas the thousands of others but the rama gave his ring which the sita could identify only to hanumana because rama knew this person can only reach to the sita so that Raghupati's the Baradutam, Bato Jatam Namami. So he was the he was born because of the wind god. Interestingly, Hanuman's name come in the same line with Sri Rama's family. So if you notice, those uh, most of the time when you were uh, chanting the. ram naam the hanumana's naam name, name is also coming in the same line who is hanumana he was a great devotee and he also loved to serve sri ramachandra it's okay but why his name came in the same line of the rama's family om sri sita lakshmana bharata शत्रुघ्न हनुमत समेत श्री रामचंद्र पर ब्रह्मणे नम द एवरी हिंदू डिवोटेडली दे से दिस लाइन ओम श्री सीता लक्ष्मण भरत शत्रुघ्न हनुमत समेत श्री रामचंद्र पर ब्रह्मणे नम बिफोर स्टार्टिंग द राम नाम so why the hanumanas now name is coming now i bow down at the embodiment of the supreme brahman embodiment of the supreme brahman sri ramachandra along with sita lakshmana bharata shatrughna and then come hanuman why see we have to go back to the rama in this part when the king dasharatha was performing putra kama yagya this special type of ritual and uh, to be blessed with the children <coughs> then he received the divine pudding from the god then the, from the fire it came whether you believe it or not that divine pudding came sometimes some miraculous thing happened and it is there it is possible so by this way only this is happening and this pudding came and it was the god told distribute it among your wives he was having three wives kaushalya koikei and sumitra so distribute it among them and he will get the children so when he was distributing maybe at that time or sometimes some people say because the kaike she became you know that as uh, the one of the because she was just playing in the hands of god and uh, people started hating because she became the cause of rama's exile so sometimes people they say 
as because she was not very uh, you know, devoted, she was carelessly, carelessly receiving that pudding and a portion was falling down from her hand. Maybe, or maybe when the king was, the Sarata was distributing, a portion was falling and a bird was there. It flew and took that, eh, thinking that is there something to eat. It took it and it was flying. The Devaraja Indra noticed it. The, the king of gods, Indra, he noticed it and immediately asked the Bayu, because Pabana, the Bayu, is very fast. They go and catch that bird and take that porridge because it is not an ordinary porridge. It cannot, he cannot eat it. So, and where to deliver it? Take it to that one part, he said, you go over there and you will find a pious practicing austerity, praying to Lord Shiva for a son. Give that bird to her. And this pious lady was Anjani, Anjana. So when this part, the little porridge was carried by the Pavana and it was given to the Anjaniya. Anjaniya was blessed with the son Hanumana. So Hanumana's name became Pavanaputra. as because the Pavana carried that pudding. So this is the way. And the same pudding which the Rama's mother, Lakshmana's mother and Bharata's mother, they all ate. So obviously Anjana also and her son became in the same family line. I think so. So this is the way we can think. That is why they say Sri Sri Sita, Lakshmana, Bharata, Shatrugna, Hanuman Sameta, Sri Ramachandra Parabrahmane Namaha. So this is the Hanumana and he is also one of the part of the great Vishnu's blessings. The Vishnu who came and also the same Vishnu became the Lakshmana, Bharata, Shatrugna, and same Vishnu became Hanumana. Now Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, as he is the god of unification, he practiced like Hanumana to realize the truth. Now, now the question is, what is the spiritual path that Hanumana followed? When we are, you will find in the among the Hindus, as because the religion is a completely free thing, you can approach to God in any manner you like. That is the beauty of the Hinduism. There is no hard and fast rule that you must have to get up in such and such time, you must have to do like this, must have to, no, no must. If they say there is God and here is you, and you are supposed to become God. And to become God, you can approach to God in any manner you like. What is the basic, the bottom line teaching? You should have to understand this unique world, manifested world, is nothing but maya, illusion. The moment you can understand this, immediately, at the same time, when you have understood it, realized it, then naturally you will withdraw the mind from this world and where the mind will go. When the mind is not turmoiled, disturbed with the desires, what a, this world is nothing but desire, full of desire, different type of desires. When the mind is free from desire, what? That's all. The whole religion is that much. But the problem is, as they call it Maya, as because it is the power of God. God is playing. God has become different, the being. At the same time, God has made this very difficult rule to reach to the original root. So this is the reason. Now different paths are there. And Hanumana followed some path. 
to reach to that knowledge. Which is that path? Apparently, Hanumana followed the path of devotion. Why? Because we find Hanumana is famous example of Dasya Bhava. Because most of the time we'll find that whenever uh, we are talking about the Dasya Bhava, and we, we give the example of Hanumana. This, of all the five famous, the approaches towards Godhead, that is a, the Dvaita Vadin, particularly the Vaishnavas, the dual, dualities are there. So the God is here, I am here, I can approach to God, and you can approach as because in the human mind, there are five different uh, feelings. Utilizing those five feelings, they, so th this is the way you can reach God. How you can, they're like a Shanta Bhava. That you are completely unperturbed. That's called Shanta. And the Rishis, they used to follow that. Never disturb you. So whatever happening all around you, let it be going on. I am not disturbed because I know. This is all the game that the God is playing. I have nothing to do with it. So that is a different approach. It's very difficult. Because of the ego. We always associate with something. And we like to say something, do something to solve the problem. Because that is there. You have to control yourself and become Shanta. Then the Dasya Bhava. That is... I am the servant of God. I don't want to know anything. Whatever the master will ask me to do, I will do. So that we find in the Hanumana. The Shanta, they call Rishis. Dasya, example, is Hanumana. Then Sakya. Sakya is a friendly. We find that in, in the characteristics of Arjuna. So that Shakya Bhava. Bhatsalya. Bhatsala is a motherly affection towards a child, towards a son. God as your child, and by that way as the mother they do, taking care of the God, in Sanskrit is called Bhatsya Bhava, Bhatsalya. Bhatsalya Bhava, and the example is Yashoda, the mother of the Krishna. And then finally, Madhura Bhava, the lover's attitude towards God. I love you. That Radha was having that attitude. So five different attitudes, five different temperaments, five different ways. The Which one Hanumana practiced? The mostly people will say Dasya. And to have the become that, it is not so easy to become the servant of God. You have to abolish all your ego. But at the same time, you should have loyalty towards the God. And today I am serving him and then next day I am going over there. Today I am a Hindu. Acha no, let me try something of the Buddhism, something of the Christianity. You cannot practice that completely the loyal towards that God. But at the same time, the courteous, very gentle, very strong physically and intellectually, and intelligent to understand the situation and to act accordingly, he is very bold. We find all these good qualities in the characteristics of Hanumana. He is resourceful. A servant means constantly sitting, he doesn't know anything. But no, whenever there is a problem, immediately he can suggest to his master that this is the way we can solve the problem. Very resourceful. He's very fast. He's judgmental. So suppose you are telling something, the, no, this should not be done. I'm not going to do that. He's very frank. At the same time, very truthful. All these qualities we find in the characteristics of Hanumana and we think Hanumana was a devotee. One important point we should remember that 
Mahavir Hanumana was already a perfected soul before he met Sri Ramachandra. The sometimes when we are discussing about the Hanumana, we always think that he realized God in Ramachandra, serving Ramachandra. I don't think so. Because the Hanumana was already a perfected person. So he, when he met uh, the Sri Ramachandra, he was already a perfected soul. But this is a very important point. That means the Hanumana has already practiced his spirituality, spiritual austerities. He reached his goal and he was blessed by that knowledge. But then only he is coming to serve the master in a different capacities. We will find here when the Sugriv, who was in exile out of fear of his elder brother Bali, those who know the, the story of the Ramayana, you can connect, you can understand. Those who have not heard, this better you can, there are simple Ramayanas are there, you can read. These two brothers, because of the misunderstanding, the, it all happened. Then the elder brother <coughs> wanted to kill this, his young junior brother, misunderstanding, because, and then he was hiding, etc., etc. In a self, we find the Sugriva who was hiding from Bali, his elder brother. He was fortunate because he was having a great friend and minister, Hanumana. Again, so why I am mentioning this? Because the Hanumana could be with the Bali. Because Bali was ruling. Bali was more powerful. But Hanumana was always with the truth. So this is the point also we should remember. Even though the Sugriv was hiding, he was in great difficulty. There was chances the Sugriv will be killed by his brother. Because his brother used to send a lot of people all the time searching every corner to find his brother to kill. So that he, he can be sure that no one is going to challenge his at the rule. But Hanumana was at that time, instead of going to a benefit, he was supporting Shugriba. Why? Shugriba was correct. The Hanumana's character shows whatever happens, we should be always with those people who are good people. This is the discriminative capacity. The human being, this is the important thing. Do we read Ramayana, we read Mahabharata, we read different type of scripture, and we think that God is something. No, it is our personal life. We must have to apply this knowledge of spirituality in our personal life. Then only, not only me becoming happy, and we can transform the whole human society too. Otherwise, what is the use of this religion? I am transforming myself and at the same time I am helping the human society, my society to become good. Atmana Mokshartam Jagat Hitaya Cha. That is what Swami Vivekananda fixed the motto of the Ramakrishna mission. Those who are the followers of Sri Ramakrishna, they should follow this. They are trying very hard to break that the bond of maya that all these things all around us are permanent no it is temporary but at this moment as because i cannot go beyond this i have to handle this i have to live within this but with a carefully so we should not get entangled with it oh my son oh my daughter oh my family Oh, my grandchildren, and I give my whole life thinking about them. Then you are bound. Well, they are there. I love them, like them, and then I do whatever is necessary for me to help them. But at the same time, I know the time will come, I have to depart. And they will grow, they will survive in their own way. 
whether I like it or not, I have to depart someday. So separation is an obvious thing. Understanding that if we are withdrawing our that terrible attachment, I am free. So that is the main teaching of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. That is the main teaching of the religion. Here, the Sugriva, when he was hiding from his elder brother Bali, Hanuman followed him. He was advising him and he was constantly consoling and encouraging him. Don't worry, time will come, time will come. When you will get the, the whole thing that you are supposed to get, Hanuman was with him. Now one day, Dirgabahu, Vishalakshu, Sharachap, Kasyanasyad, Bhayam Drishtva, Hetu, Surataru, Pamo. Now I am quoting from Kiskinda Parva, from 2 to 20, the whole, all the verses, it gives the account of that. I am only taking two lines. Dirga Bahu, the long, powerful hands. Bishal Akshu, the big and beautiful eyes. Shara Chapasi Dharino, armed with fearful bows and arrows, and the sword. Kasyana Syad Bhayam Drishtva, seeing these, who will not be afraid? And who are these? Hetu Surusuto Pamo. Surusuto Pamo means they are. Now the Rama and Lakshmana, they were wandering in different places and they were trying to search the Sita because she, she was abducted. And they reached to the place where this Sugriv was hiding. And Sugriv noticed it because he used to keep an eye who is coming. So he was on the top of a, a hill. From there he noticed the two brothers are coming. He never knew the two brothers. He saw that like the gods, the two persons are coming. And they are like this, he is describing. Long, powerful hands, two beautiful big eyes. And they are having the divine weapons. So he became very much afraid. And then he consulted with his trusted minister, Hanuman. Hanuman, can you please go and check who are the people coming? Here, from here, and this is the first time Hanuman is meeting Sri Ramachandra. Hanuman told, if I go in this form, then obviously they may not believe me because they will think, who am I? So he changed in the form of a Brahmin. The Brahmins, usually people, they trust them. Brahmins, all the religious leaders, religious people who are following the religion must, must follow these because the people trust them. And we should not do anything so that the trust on religion will be broken. You are free to do anything you like, but not with the garb of a sannyasin or a religious person. This is very important because that will be more sinful than the other sin that you are committing. People have great faith in the religious people, those who are wearing the dress of a Brahmin, a religious person. So he is humble. He is not taking part to any. So Hanumana went into that form. And he talked to Rama. And as I mentioned, Rama immediately believed him. And Hanuman immediately understood that this is the Parabrahma on whom he is to meditate come in the form of a human being. So Hanumana immediately dedicated himself. Friends, now quickly we will go through the what are the things that Hanumana did. Hanumana was a great yogi. 
he also saw the Sri Rama, Sri Rama and immediately understood that Sri Rama is in human form. He is not an ordinary person. He is the Shuddha Brahma Parat Para Rama. Is the Para and Apara. And he is beyond all this. And is the pure Brahman has come in this human form. Without realization, can anyone recognize? There are thousands of people who are there in the streets of Calcutta. They used to see Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. How many of them could recognize him? When the God come in the form of a human being, it is very difficult to realize. Even the Bhagavan Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, he is telling the same thing. Your heart, those who have already having the purification in their heart can see, can understand, can believe, can follow them. You can imagine in the first meeting itself, Hanumana already is a grown-up person and he saw the Ramachandra, he understood these. Now, why I am telling that Hanumana is a yogi? He was having Ashtashiddhi. We have already discussed about the Ashtashiddhi many a times. The Ashtashiddhi, eight different power that you, one can have when one practicing yoga. Withdrawing the mind from the sense objects and concentrating on one particular thing and slowly, slowly having the power of, on the nature. Hanumana, having the Siddhi, you know, he was going to Sri Lanka. You know, Hanumana was sitting, all people were sitting, and all. then the Rama told, we have to go to Sri Lanka, that is the place. But how the Lank he will go? Almost all the parts they have already searched. And then they came on the bank of the of that uh, ocean and they saw that island. What about that island? Somebody should go and search whether the Mahashita is there or not. Who can go? Then all turned to Hanumana. Why? Because Hanumana was a yogi. All they knew. But Hanumana was sitting quietly. Someone came and told Hanumana, now you remember the qualities that you acquired in the practicing yoga. Apply that to serve your master, the great Lord, Sri Ramachandra. Hanumana immediately understood, now I can surely utilize this power. And it is going to, I am going to serve my Lord. So the power that I have got from the God himself, I am utilizing that to serve him. And Hanumana became he. It's called Mahima. In the Ashta Shiddhi, one of the Shiddhi is Mahima. To become a huge body. And with that huge body, when he jumped, he became very light. Light like the Laghima. So Mahima and Laghima, Laghu, Laghu means light. So he was flying, but his body, though it is a huge, but he became very light, applying those Ashtashiddhi. And when he was crossing the ocean, the story goes, you know, sometimes it is mixed with different type of things, the history and imagination, it may be. Then there, the Ravana was also having some power, and he put someone as a guard, Anyone coming to approach must pass through the mouth. The Hanumana immediately became so little, tiny, that they never noticed that one, the demon who was there girding the ocean, couldn't notice to the mouth and pass through that. And that is called anima to become the way. And the Kamabhasaita, I am not telling all the eight, just Kamabhasaita to achieve whatever he wishes. Hanumana was searching, he found Mahasita. Then, as I told, he showed that uh, the ring to the mother. And Hanumana understood that if this huge form I go and approach, Mother Sita will be frightened. 
she won't understand and she will think that it is a demon. He became very humble, a, a small body, and he went to Mother Sita, and just as a Hanumana he came, Banara, and the Mother Sita was knowing the different type of people are there, that this humble person approached. So these, all the discriminative capacities he was having, so we know about it, the karmi. And also we can have, there are so many, so many varieties of examples are there in the Ram Ramayana. He saved the life of the Lakshmana because he went and brought the whole hill. He plucked the whole hill because he was not finding that particular medicinal plant over there. He couldn't recognize and there was not, not much time left. So he plucked the whole hill and brought it. And most of the time you'll find that the picture. People may not understand it. They may think these are all that the only stories, but it is not. The powerful yogi can do anything as the Sri Krishna himself lifted the hill, Govardhana, because of the yoga power. And Hanumana was also a karmi because he was a devoted soul. He used to do so much of work, almost everything he did. But when they wanted to give the credit to him, he started crying, don't, please don't say like that. It is only because of the Ramachandra I could perform it. That is the characteristics of a karmi. The one who is working, working for the benefit of others, but not for any selfish motive, not with any ego. So obviously, those who are, this is also one of the paths of the Hindus to approach to the Godhead, that I am not going to the temple, but I serve people, I love people, I like to be always with them. But I don't have any hidden agenda. I love them, so I serve them. I see God in them, so I serve them. So unselfish way if you are working. As Swami Vivekananda said in the very first page of the Karma Yoga, that you will reach to the same goal through unselfish work. One can reach to the same goal where Buddha reached by his knowledge and Christ by his prayer. That means the devotee and the jnani, where they are reaching, a karma yogi can also reach over there. Hanumana was the life we served, whole life. Then afterwards, they sometimes they say it's a prakshipta, it is afterwards added, which was not in the original Ramayana. Even then, he was serving the Rama's children, the Lava and Kusha. The Hanumana is always there. Till now, the people they believe because this is a faith. Hanumana is a faith. And that faith can never die. Hanumana is still surviving. So Hanumana was a yogi. Hanumana was a karma yogi too. And about the bhakti, was he a devotee? No question. He was 100% devoted to Sri Ramachandra. He was a bhakta and then when the people were asking, Hanumana, what is this? You know, the, in the Hindus and in all religious uh, tradition, they will, the, the, this is a very special uh, conjuncture of this. So this is a very special pious moment. People should do this, people should do that. They will go and bathe in the holy Ganga and all like that. When they used to ask Hanumana, that means, that holy moment, Hanumana said, I don't know. Because for me, it is only the Sri Ramachandra. I constantly think about Sri Ramachandra. And within my heart, it is only Sri Ramachandra. I don't count the days, months, time. No, no, no. Every moment of my life is dedicated to Ramachandra. So he was a great devotee. He could never imagine the separation from Sri Ramachandra. And at the same time, he was a jnani. He was a man of knowledge. And what is that jnana again? Let us remind ourselves. Jnana means 
the knowledge of one, not the two. The only one. So what is that one? Consciousness all-pervading. And this consciousness which is all-pervading is known as Brahman. And sometimes from the yogic terminology they will say Paramatma. From the terminology of the Vedantin it is Brahman. And the yogis they will say Paramatma, the same thing. And the devotees will say this is Bhagavan. So this is the way the Hanumana he understood. How you know it? The very famous verse Bhagavan to explain that when you understand God, then you become one with God, then in different attitude you are serving God that is only to get the joy. But you know what is truth. So Hanumana said in one place, Deho buddhva dashoham. When I am feeling that I am separate from you, O God, then I am your servant. Deho buddhva. Deho means this body. Buddhva, when I consider that I am this body, then the duality comes. And that time, I am your servant, O God. So God is different, I am different. Deho buddhva dasoham. Same person, same Hanumana is telling. Jeeva buddhva tadang shaka. When I understand I am not only this body, I am also the soul. Not only this body and mind, I am also having a soul. And also having the Atman within me. And that is the Jivatma, which is the reflected truth on my buddhi and everything that I am doing because of that, that reflected, the Paramatma is reflected on my and that jiva. When that conception comes, I can understand that I am your part. Tad Angshaka, I am your part. Atma buddhva tamibaham. This is the ultimate. When it comes the Atma Buddha, I am that soul. Aham Brahmashmi. Then I am one with you. So this is the beauty of the Hinduism. And it comes through the Hanumana. And this Hanumana, who was a yogi, who was a karmi, who was a bhakta, and also the jnani, and all the four paths that he followed, and he himself became one with the truth, and that is the Param Brahma. Atma buddhva tabe baham iti me nishchita matihi. Not that I am just making, I am, this is my complete conviction. So, this is Mahavir Hanumanji. When you consider about the Hanumanji, we should consider this. When we, we are worshipping Hanumanji, the every, every place is small, small temple and going on putting the, the red vermilion and all that, those things, nothing wrong, good. But we have to understand all the qualities and we have to try to imbibe those qualities. Then only the Hanuman puja or Hanuman worship will be really beneficial. Hanuman is the symbol of complete spirituality. Thank you, friends. And let us say a, a Shanti three times and we conclude. Om Shanti 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 Hari hi om tat sat Sri Ramakrishna arpanamastu